This video is sponsored by Fishing Clash. No matter how bad it gets on land, don't go in the water. Many of us grew up with those wise words from the documentary series Chased by Sea Monsters, and I'm happy to report that they've aged very well. Modern paleontology assures us that the ocean has been terrifying in every age of the world that has included macroscopic life, and we're going to cover the biggest members of many prehistoric predator groups. Any one of them is worthy of inclusion in a thalassophobia-themed horror video game, but some would give the Mariana Trench nightmares. You'll see what I mean soon enough. Since this video is discussing the biggest aquatic predators in Earth's history, we'll need to define some terms. By predator, I mean an organism that consumes live prey, and these animals all either consumed large prey, or hunted animals that were large relative to their own body size. So no filter feeders, otherwise this list would mainly be baleen whales. An aquatic predator is an animal that hunts in the water or does the majority of its hunting in the water. So sorry Titanoboa, the evidence just isn't conclusive in your case. Maybe you'll get to be in another video. As usual, sources are in the comments. Let's start off with the biggest lobopodian in the fossil record. What's a lobopodian, you may ask? After all, this channel does typically focus on theropod dinosaurs, so suddenly bringing in giant carnivorous invertebrates is way out of left field. My line of reasoning is that Omnidens amplis is an awesome animal, so I want to talk about it. You don't really need more of a reason, honestly. Lobopodians are part of a group called Panarthropoda, which includes proper arthropods, tardigrades, and velvet worms. We don't really know where lobopodians land in the Panarthropod family tree, or which of those groups they're more related to, but one thing's for sure. They're cool. Omnidens looks like a sea slug crossed with an arrakis sandworm and was up to a meter and a half long. Nothing quite like a wolf-sized predatory invertebrate to brighten your day. Omnidens wasn't only the largest predatory lobopod, it was also the biggest animal in the Cambrian that we've discovered to date. Imagine being a sci-fi apex predator that also happened to be the biggest animal on the planet. While imagining sea monsters is cool, have you ever tried catching one? Fishing Clash is the ultimate fishing simulator, and it's free to play on your phone. By leveling up your virtual fishing skills and joining with your friends to form a clan, you can become the ultimate fishing champion. Swim to the top of global rankings and earn your place by catching boss level fish that only true angler champions have the skills to capture, unlocking unique and powerful fishing rods as you go. You can even learn about the animals and their real world habitats as you catch them, supporting conservation efforts with virtual events. Earn daily rewards just by logging in that make it even more fun to catch exotic fish from around the globe. It's easy to learn, free to play, and perfect for anyone who loves fish. You can download the game using my link in the description box or simply scan the QR code I'm showing on the screen. Use my special gift code VIVIDEN to claim a $20 value reward, including a unique avatar, for free. Try Fishing Clash and rule the oceans today. Onto Eurypterids, another group of underrated invertebrates. Informally referred to as sea scorpions, Eurypterids aren't actually that closely related to scorpions. They are chelicerates, though, which includes arachnids like scorpions and spiders within its glorious ranks. J. Keleteris renaniae was the longest of them all at up to 2.6 meters from head to tail tip, as long as a small car. It moved through the water with its powerful tail and paddle-like appendages and grabbed prey with vicious claws attached to long, spindly arms. It may not have been the most massive Eurypterid, though. That title belongs to Hibertoteris wittebergensis. Hibertoteris wittebergensis was another Eurypterid, but much more stockily built. If J. Keleteris is the Legolas of Eurypterids, Hibertoteris is Gimli. But Gimli's been bulking and is probably taking steroids. Hibertoteris's rotund form would make it much heavier than the lightly constructed J. Keleteris and through convergence it somewhat resembled the modern triops. I wouldn't recommend raising these for a science project though. You're liable to lose several limbs in the attempt. Turtles also used to be gigantic, even more gigantic than they are today anyway. Leatherback turtles are still enormous animal. Archelon Iskyros was the very biggest at 2 to 3 tons, and followed a similar body plan to leatherbacks with a smooth shell and wing-like flippers perfect for navigating the ocean. Such large size and thick armor made sense. It lived in the western interior seaway of Cretaceous North America. Archelon had to deal with attacks from sharks, mosasaurs, and psychotic 20-foot bulldog fish like Cephactinus. The sharks and mosasaurs were a lot more likely to attack a big rotund turtle, but I just really wanted to mention Cephactinus, it's neat. Stupendemus geographica takes the title of largest freshwater turtle. Its carapace would have measured approximately 3 meters long in life, and the entire animal would have weighed well over a metric ton. If you think alligator snapping turtles are scary, make it the size of a saltwater crocodile and see how you feel. 
Its robust, powerful skull could snap a human arm or leg as if it were chewing up a wet twig. When are we getting the turtle version of Jaws? Spielberg? Hello? Snakes used to be even bigger than they are now as well. The sea snake Paleophis Colosseus, which just means colossal ancient snake, was between 8 and 12 meters long and weighed between 95 and 335 kilograms, nearly the mass of a black bear at the top end. It's likely as close as we'll ever get to the rapid swimming giant serpent basilisk of Harry Potter fame. It likely would have focused on fish and small reptiles for its meals. Fossils of Paleophis have been found all across the world, so it's not out of the question that it would have dined on the contemporary early whales like Pachycetus and Ambulocetus. Wouldn't that be a sight? Cephalopods bring us back to giant ocean-dwelling invertebrates. Parapizosia sepinredensis takes the crown handily when it comes to mass. This Cretaceous ammonite had a shell diameter of 2 meters and weighed about 1,400 kilograms. Half of that mass was the shell, but even so, it still would be the heaviest cephalopod in the fossil record without the shell. However, Parapizosia does not appear to have been a macro predator, as ammonites are suspected to have been filter feeders and scavengers, or to have focused on small invertebrates. Disqualified. That brings us to Mesonychotuthis hamiltoni the modern colossal squid. This is the biggest cephalopod that still lives, with the largest specimens weighing in at nearly 500 kilograms. Beaks larger than that of the big specimen have been discovered, but beak size and body size are weakly correlated. Colossal squids live in the ocean surrounding Antarctica, thriving in deep, cold, oxygen-rich waters. They hunt lanternfish and other medium-sized fish, and may also predate upon one another. Squid cannibalism. Squidabalism. I'll say that counts. But are they the biggest predatory cephalopods ever? Endocerus giganteum is the scientific name of the giant orthocone I grew up with from Walking with Monsters. This ortificia nautiloid was up to 5.7 meters long from the specimens we still have, and a destroyed specimen may have measured up to 9 meters long. While the description of armored giant squid isn't cladistically accurate, it's evocative enough that I can't really disagree with it. Endocerus is like if you took an Architeuthis and gave it a scabbard. I'd love to see more of these guys represented in modern paleomedia. Amphibians refuse to be left out of the party. Mastodonsaurus giganteus was a temnospondyl amphibian from the Triassic that was the size of a saltwater crocodile and likely filled a very similar niche. It terrorized the swamps and river systems of Europe over 200 million years ago. Its skull had special groove-like structures called sulci that would have allowed it to sense movement and vibrations in the water, making it an efficient ambush predator. It also had a very pronounced pineal foramen, right there between the eyes on the back of the skull, to help regulate its sleep cycle. Melatonin gummies didn't exist in the Triassic, you see, but if they did, the basal saurischians like Herrerasaurus were probably gatekeeping access. Big Paleo and Big Pharma go hand in hand, after all. If you thought an amphibian cosplaying as a giant crocodile was scary, how about actual crocodilomorphs? Dinosuchus lived up to the name of Terror Crocodile. Adults of the biggest species, Dinosuchus hatcheri, ranged between 8 and nearly 11 meters, and the bigger ones would have weighed between 5 and 7 metric tons. It lived in Campania, North America, just before T. rex showed up, and could have predated upon smaller Tyrannosaur relatives, along with hadrosaurs like Cretosaurus and big turtles like Balthramus. Bite force estimates for Dinosuchus are all over the place, ranging from 18,000 to 102,000 newtons. Given how the terror crocodile is 5 to 7 times larger than the biggest saltwater crocodiles, which had rear bite forces of up to 16,000 newtons, the higher end of that range is likely closer to reality. But Dinosuchus wasn't the only giant crocodilian to reign over ancient North America. Purosaurus brasiliensis, the giant Brazilian caiman, was a monster in its own right. Known only from skull material, Purosaurus was likely around 10.5 meters long and weighed 5,400 kilograms, although those mass estimates are quite uncertain given the material. It lived in the Miocene during the Age of Mammals and was likely the biggest predator on the continent in its time it would have used its 52,000 newton bite force to crunch down on the shell of Stupendemus, the giant turtle we talked about earlier, and there's also bite marks matching Purosaurus teeth on the remains of giant terror birds from the area. Josepha artigasia, the 700 kilogram capybara relative, probably would have been one of its favorite snacks. I just think it's incredibly interesting that crocodilians have dominated the river system apex predator niche for hundreds of millions of years. Why do you think that is? Let me know in the comments. We're back to the open ocean with mosasaurs. Aquatic lizards suspected to be closely related to monitor lizards and snakes, mosasaurs were sleek, fast predators that thrived during the Cretaceous period. They were quite diverse, actually. Taxa like globidens with peg-shaped shell-crushing teeth show that they weren't afraid to experiment evolutionarily. The biggest mosasaur species is up for debate. Tylosaurus proriger is one of the contenders, specifically with a specimen nicknamed Bunker. This huge animal was at least 12 meters long and weighed around 10 metric tons, the size of a fully grown T. rex. It would use its powerful jaws to hunt turtles, sharks, other mosasaurs, and stray dinosaurs. Mosasaurs had palatine teeth, as if they weren't already cool enough. Imagine getting bitten by one of these things just to get bitten again from inside of the mouth. 
That's some serious Xenomorph-style crap right there. Mosasaurus Hoffmani is the other rival for the title of biggest Mosasaur, with the biggest specimen again at a length of 12 plus meters and mass of around 10 tons. Mosasaurus had a rigid skull that would have let it not only bite down hard, but ram into its prey and stun them or kill them with the impact. Prehistoric Planet has a great behind the scenes breaking this down, and if you haven't watched their Mosasaur fight, I strongly recommend it. Histology on Mosasaurus reveals that the whole group was likely endothermic with a high metabolic rate and active fast lifestyle. We even have Mosasaur remains from Antarctica. Although the polar seas would have been undoubtedly warmer in the Cretaceous, it's still an indication that mosasaurs were able to succeed in a variety of environments across the world. In a way, they were like the Cretaceous equivalent of orcas, huge, fast, active predators that thrived in every ocean. As far as I'm aware, there's no evidence of gregariousness in mosasaurs, but man would that be cool. Pliosaurs are the group of marine super predators that my child self gets most excited about, mainly thanks to the awe-inspiring walking dinosaurs like Pleurodon. Speaking of which, I'm serious about putting that in Subnautica and giving it its own Thrive Read in a Live video. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. But uh, anyway, Pliosaurs may have never reached the 150 ton mass of the fictional bull like Pleurodon in the documentary, but they still dwarfed most other aquatic predators in the fossil record. The biggest known from somewhat decent remains is a specimen referred to the genus Pliosaurus. There's no species name, but the specimen is nicknamed Archeon, given its terrifying size and physical power. Archeon was estimated by its describers to be an average of 12.1 meters long, and scaling from more complete relatives would have weighed about 20 metric tons. That's four average male orcas combined into a reptilian hypercarnivore. Pliosaurs were successful for a long time, actually, thriving in the Jurassic period and continuing for most of the Cretaceous. I'm not aware of any specific evidence indicating that they overlapped with mosasaurs, but I suppose it's possible. That would be quite the confrontation to see. Macro-predatory whales refuse to be left out of this list. Livyaton Melvilli, named after the Hebrew word for the biblical leviathan, along with the author of the novel Moby Dick, was a Miocene monster. The carnivorous sperm whale relative has the largest non-tusk teeth of any known animal, leaving little doubt as to what they were used for. Unfortunately, it's only known from a skull, so we don't really know how big the animal would have been. Estimates for the holotype, scaling from various relatives both living and extinct, range between 13.5 and 17.5 meters for its body length and anywhere from 26 to 57 metric tons. That's, uh, a wide range, but at least we've got the skull, right? Livyaton is famous for living with another super predator we'll be covering in a few minutes. I'm sure most of you know exactly what I'm talking about. But it should be seen as an amazing animal in its own right. Livyaton had an extremely large supracranial basin, this big old dip in its skull, and theories abound about its usage. It almost certainly would have facilitated sonar for hunting and communication, and may have even functioned as a soft tissue battering ram in intraspecific combat and hunting. However, Livyaton wasn't the biggest macro predatory whale. That title likely goes to the modern sperm whale, at least when just accounting for the specimens we have preserved. Sperm whales, properly known as Physeter macrocephalus, can be massive. Fully grown males are around 15 to nearly 19 meters long and weigh 30 to 57 tons on the high end. World record individuals may exceed 20 meters and weigh close to 80 tons, although it's not really fair to compare in that case. We have a huge sample size of measured and verified sperm whales relative to most big fossil taxa, so saying that it's definitely larger than Livyaton isn't entirely accurate. But hey, this way we get to have them both on the list. I'm pretty happy with that. For more information on population dynamics, maximum size, and more cool whale facts, I strongly recommend checking out Joe McClurry's work over at Cytology Hub. He's got years of awesome, in-depth posts there detailing the historical standards for whale measurements and his own research on the subject. You all knew that sharks would be in a video about the world's biggest aquatic predators. Otodus megalodon is an obvious shoe-in for the title of potentially the biggest macro-predatory animal in the history of our planet, but it's an animal shrouded with controversy. Conspiracy theorists still think it's out there somewhere, internet fanboys are desperate to cling to one interpretation over another, and papers come out every few years proposing new body shapes for an animal that's only known from teeth and precious few vertebrae. Currently, as a 2025 study framed it, average adult megalodon would have been 11 to 16 meters long and weighed 20 to 33 tons. The largest specimen scientifically described, known among some circles as Ragnarok or the Yellowstone Hyperpredator, despite being from Denmark, not Yellowstone, would be around 24 meters long and weigh approximately 94 tons. That's a huge animal, full stop. Just giant shark. Holy cow, very scary. I don't care what the bite force is, it could swallow me whole without needing to close its mouth. Uh, oh, okay, actually, I do care what the bite force is because that's cool. A 2008 study calculated a posterior bite force of well over 100,000 newtons. 
I'm not aware of any more recent estimates, so if you're watching this and have more knowledge on the subject than I do, please let me know with a comment. We should also remember that not every Megalodon was as big as Ragnarok. As a matter of fact, most were only a third of the size, and we're not working with only a handful of specimens here. We have tens of thousands of Megalodon teeth from across the world, giving us a very good idea of the animal's size distribution. When factoring that in, it's actually quite unlikely that Otodus Megalodon was the biggest aquatic macro predator in Earth's history. What would have surpassed it, though? Time to go back in time even further. Like, way further. All the way to the late Triassic, when marine reptiles called ichthyosaurs ruled the planet's oceans. These dolphin-like creatures had fast metabolisms and blubber, and the vast majority had sharp teeth. Many were vicious predators of animals nearly their own size, like Guizhou ichthyosaurus from China. A specimen of this 5-meter ichthyosaur was found with a partially eaten 4-meter thalatosaur in its stomach. Guizhou ichthyosaurus has small teeth for its body size, a trait that led us to believe for decades that ichthyosaurs had evolved to hunt small or soft-bodied prey exclusively. But this discovery demonstrated that ichthyosaurs actually could take on large animals. The discovery of sharp teeth in Shonosaurus popularis, a humpback whale-sized ichthyosaur from Nevada, further supported the idea. In perhaps no ichthyosaur is high-level macro predation better exemplified than Himalayasaurus tibetensis, a 15-meter, 35-ton beastie from Tibet. The cutting edges on its teeth resemble those of large theropods and other super carnivores. It's known only from a single specimen, but is already at least the size of a typical adult megalodon, while likely being a much faster swimmer. Much larger teeth from Switzerland implied the existence of 40 to 50 ton ichthyosaurs that follow a similar body plan. You can learn more about that animal, the Swiss tyrant, in this video from a couple years ago. Ichthyotitan severnensis is an interesting case. Known only from jaw material off the coast of the UK, its size and ecology are far from certain. Depending on the relatives you scale it from, Ichthyotitan would be anywhere from 20 to 25 meters long and weigh between 50 and 75 plus metric tons, a giant by the standards of any marine animal. How predatory it must have been is unknown. No teeth have been discovered from the sites where ichthyotitan material is known, but given how each specimen consists of the serangular, the back portion of the jaw, that doesn't come as too much of a surprise. If it were toothless, as a handful of other big Shastasaurid species are, then it may have slurped on gigantic, yet undiscovered cephalopods. If it had small, sharp teeth like Shonosaurus, and the vast majority of its relatives, then it would have been a terrifying super predator on par with all but the very largest megalodon specimens. Either way, its bone structure was compared to carbon fiber in strength by the authors of a 2024 study, so with or without teeth, it would have a devastating bite. More giant Shastasaurid material has been uncovered in British Columbia, with vertebrae and ribs scaling to an animal in excess of 20 meters long. More information should be coming soon, so keep an eye out for updates. Finally, we have the Oust Colossus, what is likely an enormous ichthyotitan specimen. Its size is also quite uncertain, anywhere between 27 and 30 plus meters long, and between 110 and 170 metric tons in body mass. Given that it's only known from a jaw fragment, albeit one big enough that it was thought to be a sauropod femur for decades, we have no idea how it would have eaten, lived, or died. The 2024 histology report I mentioned earlier found that neither the ichthyotitan or oust specimens they studied were completely done growing, which is a horrifying thought, although we have no clue how much bigger these animals would have gotten. We should, uh, pray for a complete skeleton to be found. And if it has cutting teeth like a Himalayasaurus, so much the better for my ichthyosaur fanboy heart. I'm a simple man. I like my wife, lasagna, and prehistoric sea monsters. Don't forget to support the channel by getting Fishing Clash on your phone for free! Use my gift code VIVIDEND to get a $20 reward and share your biggest catch in the pinned comment. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by sharing and subscribing, and consider joining the channel to gain loyalty badges and shoutouts at the Raptor level with early access to videos at the Mega Therapod level. I'm the VIVIDEND, and I'll see you next time!